Until now, we've been talking about class list addressing techniques. And we started off with a classful addressing technique, and then we moved into fixed width. And today in lab, I'd like to talk about something called VLSM. And I said when we first started doing this, we're going to be going from the most wasteful to the most efficient technique. So in the handout that I passed out to you guys, I have this little logical topology of a router being connected to another router. Oops, let me make sure I get this correct. I'm not sure if I like that marker. So I have this router connected to another router using a serial connection. We usually call this a point-to-point -point connection. And then this connects to another router. And then we connect these back together for like a little redundancy. I believe off of this router is a private network of 60 hosts. Is that right? And then off of this network over here, I have, I believe, 20 hosts. And then over here, I have 14 hosts, if I remember correctly. Is that correct? So this is the topology that we're working with? All right, so how many networks do you guys see in this topology? Six, yeah, I have three local area networks, then I have three WANs. Is that correct? Initially, if I was giving it a network address of 192.168.1.0 slash 24, is that what I have written down on that? That was my original block. If we started this out in the very first week learning about addressing, and the first thing we discovered was classful addressing, what address would I give? What network address would I give this group of hosts, these groups of hosts? If I was using classful, and I was giving this. First of all, if it was classful, I would ignore this, correct? Because you don't have a subnet mask or a prefix for when it comes to classful environment. So if I were to assign a network address to a group of, the, uh, a group of hosts, like this group right here, what address would I use if I wanted to use a class C private? <coughs> 192.168.something.something. Dot dot something. Let's make this one the dot one. Dot zero. So this would become 192.168.1.0. Dot dot well, would I make this network address if I, using, if I was using classful? Dot two dot zero. Where would I make this network? And where would I make this network? Notice I'm only changing the third octet because according to the classful environment, this is a class C, and class 3 consists of the first three octets for the network part, correct? And all I have to do is change one of those three uh, octets to alter the network address. So then I can come up here and make this one dot five and then make this one dot six. How many total addresses would I be wasting if I use classful for this topology? Let's just focus on just the wide area networks. How many total addresses do I need per each wide area network? How many hosts are in a wide area, in a point to point or in a serial connection? Four total, because I need a broadcast and a network address, plus I need an address to identify this side of the router, and I need an address to identify this router's interface, correct? So there's four there, four there, four there, but how many addresses am I assigning them when I use a classful address, when I use a class C address? 256 total, right? So I'm wasting 252 per each of these wide area networks that I can no longer use again. Really, really inefficient. So what do we do to help minimize this wastefulness? So I'm getting rid of classful. And what was the next addressing technique we learned to, get, to become less wasteful, to become a little bit more efficient? What was that addressing technique called? Classless fixed width, right? We used fixed width subnetting. And how did we determine that? Now, folks, on the exam, I might give you a diagram like this. It's going to be the last question on the exam. It's usually worth 40 points. And I'll ask you three separate sections using the same topology. How would you address each of these networks using classful addressing? We just got done doing that. 
Then I'll ask you how would you address each of those networks using fixed width techniques. And then the last one, the one that we're going to be learning today, is I'll ask you how are we going to address this using VLSM. Clear about that? So when we try to do it with fixed width, what did we do? Now remember the analogy of the sports car and the minivan, right? Ian, I think I used you as an example of this. What must we do to accommodate classless environments? What network did I look at first? We're getting away from that structured, you know, I need X number of subnets, I need X number of usable hosts, and I'm given this information. We're clear about that? Now I'm giving you a diagram. This is what's going to happen in the real world. You're going to come into an environment and you're going to ask them, well, how many networks are we working with? Well, I have one for each floor and there's three floors. Okay, you go to each floor, what are you going to start doing? You're going to count off. You're going to be like, one, two, three, four. First floor has 60 hosts. Then you're going to go to the next floor and you're going to say, one, two, three, four, and you're going to come up to 20 hosts. Then you're going to go to the last floor and you're going to count off. You're going to come up with 14 hosts. You're counting the number of end devices per each of those networks, correct? But what do I need to add to each of these numbers to be a little bit more uh, accurate when I'm dividing up these networks and the subnets? I need to add two to each of these, correct? Because I need to make sure that each of those floors have a network address and a broadcast address. Now I have 16 total host addresses, THA for short. I'm going to do the same thing with this network, add two. I'm going to get 62. And I'm going to add two to this one. I'm going to have 22. And of course, I could add two to these, but then I just know that these are four total host addresses. Make sense? I got that out of the way. So I converted my usable host range to total host ranges. What's the next thing I'm going to do with fixed width subnetting? You didn't have to deal with this when it comes to your homework or to the other problems that I have because I told you up top you have X number of usable hosts, correct? And we were to make one assumption, which was what? What did that number indicate? The widest network, correct? You always work with the widest to set the tone. Here my widest is 62 hosts total. So I'll put total up there. But more importantly, it's 62 hosts, not 62 subnets. What octet, in this particular case, is representing the host portion? Now, how do you know that the fourth octet is representing the host portion? Yeah, I want to get rid of that notation now. If you don't see this, like in the math problems that were given to you guys, then you had to make the assumption that it's a class C. On the last problem on your homework, you do see this. In fact, it's a slash 17, right? You do not assume classful then. This is telling you that the very first 24 bits represent what of the IP address? The network. One, two, three, three octets. That so happened to correlate with a class C but it was just coincidental. On your homework, you guys are going to draw 17 spaces out and then draw your line after 17. Those 17 are going to be your network bits. Then you're going to go from the right to the left because the problem states in the homework you need like 1,000 hosts or something to the effect or 11,000, 1,100 hosts. I can't remember. It's problem number 17. It's the very, very last problem. Sorry, it's not problem number 17, but it's the very, very last problem for your homework. So you need to make sure that you guys understand what this is being used for. This slash 24 is telling me that the first 24 bits are for the network, and the last bits, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, are going to be my host bits. What am I given? I'm given host for my problem. Since I'm giving host, I have to ask myself, 2 raised to what power number of host bits is going to be able to accommodate 62 addresses? See where I got that? 
Notice I put my units up here. Host bits. How many bits am I going to need to leave behind? Because remember, you steal or you borrow for subnets. You leave bits behind for your host. How many of these bits am I going to need to leave behind to accommodate 62 hosts? Six bits. Two raised to six host bits gives me 64 hosts, which is going to be enough to accommodate the 62 total. What do I do with those six bits? I go from the right and work my way to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six. Draw the line to the left of that. What is that line signifying? You can think of the Berlin Wall, east and west. You got it. It's going to illustrate to the left of it is the network, and to the right of it is the host. All right? Next thing. How many bits do I have that I can borrow to create my subnets if I leave six bits behind for my host? Because I know this to be eight bits total. I minus my six host bits. You know, I always had a problem with math class because they always dropped units off of problems until I went into a physics class that I actually really appreciate math because of the units. Units really help solve formulas. Keep, a t keep attention to this. If I have eight total bits and I remove six host bits from it, how many bits are going to be left over and what do those bits represent? I'm going to have two. Eight minus six is two. But what are those bits? Remember, or you can say network bits. Either way work for me. But remember, we have a slash 24, so I'd have to add two to give me total network bits. So does that make sense? I have two subnet bits. Those are bits, not subnets. How many total subnets can I handle? Two raised to two subnet bits, right? So anytime you have something in bits and you want to find out a number, just take that and make it the power of two. What am I going to get if I have for what? Subnets. I want to see units. I will dock half points off when it comes to your exam. Identify them. And I'm only doing it to help you out. I mean, honestly, I know what they are, but I need to know that you guys know what they are. And by knowing what they are, you help sort of identify and organize your work. So you're not like, what are these bits again? Mark them out. Is that enough bits to work with what we have here? How many networks did you guys say I had earlier? Six. How many networks can I address if I make each of my networks 64 wide? Only four. So what do I do? Do I say, okay, half of you guys are moving down to Atlanta just so I can keep this network block that I have because I'm too cheap and buying another larger address block? Why do we take our host and group them together? What are the three reasons that we learned in chapter five? Location, purpose, security, ownership. Maybe I don't want this network to be accessed from the internet. Maybe these are all my servers. Why would I want to take my servers and move them to another network that has access to the internet? Would I not be violating the security rules? So I can't just simply say, well, if I run out of space in this classroom, the rest of you guys go to the other classroom, because that's what I'd be doing. This does not work. This fails. We are becoming wasteful. All I needed was four total host addresses, but what I decided to do is make every one of my network equal size, a fixed width of 64 total hosts. Now I'm wasting 60, which granted, it's better than wasting 252 originally, correct, when we did classful. But I'm still falling short of handling all six networks. Well, then what you guys might say is, Nick, borrow another bit. Move the line over. So I move the line over. Now I borrow three bits. Two raised to three gives me eight subnets. Is that more than enough to handle my six, uh, my six networks? 
OK, but what's the drawback? I can handle all these other networks because I have 32 now for my host size, but I can't handle this one. Do I only have half of the servers running at one time and then the other? That'll accommodate for the 62? So every other hour, I'm turning off servers. If it's an odd hour, you have access to the odd servers. If it's an even hour, you have an access. Would you imagine when I have that job, we have to flip on servers each time? No, that would be ridiculous. So what are we going to do? We're going to use another technique called VLSM. V stands for variable. What do you think we're going to vary? The L stands for length. The S and the M stand for subnet mask. So what do you guys think we're going to vary here to accommodate our problem? You got it. Hence the word VLSM. <laughs> Wasn't a trick question. I might put that on the exam, make it an extra credit question. No, make it a one point question. How do we do this? Well, just like before, we're going to find our largest host. But we can't stop there. The largest host cannot be the cookie cutter for every one of our subnets, right? We need to vary the size of this cookie cutter so we can fit more cookies in our little pan or sheet. Make sense, right? The fixed cookie cutter? Yeah. Use your imagination. If not, go home and ask mom to make some cookies. All right, here we go. This is my largest, correct? I'm going to write this out. 60 host. Actually, I'm going to write host up above this. Because all the next numbers I'm going to write is going to follow suit. And let me scoot this over. So let me write host here. Let me put 60 here. What's the next largest network? 20? What's the next largest network? And the next largest network. What's that? Well, let's put this back to two, right? Because I went back to usable. So we have two. What's the next largest network? And the next largest network? And the next largest network? There's no more networks, right? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, right? These networks are going to become subnets. Why are they going to become subnets? Because I have one single address block. And I'm going to divide that address block up into six subnets. Is that OK? That's the only thing that makes a network and a subnet different. Is typically, a network has an entire address block. A subnet is part of that entire network block. Are you good about that? And why do we do that? So all I have to do is buy one address, and I can reclaim it. If I was an ISP, I would want to try to buy I want to try to spend as less money on an address block and offer more IP addresses to my clients, correct? So I want to give them one IP address. But each of my clients need to be on their own, ne their own network for security reasons and for management purposes. I mean, I'm going to charge per address. I want to try to charge as many addresses as I possibly can. So I'm going to put each of them on their own network. So I'm going to try to create as many subnets as I possibly can with few hosts per each subnet. This is typically why you guys get one public IP address from your ISP provider, because they're subnetting that block so they can sell more addresses, more spaces within that one block. Okay. Now that I have that, what am I going to do with these numbers? Oh, by the way, since I'm addressing these as subnets, is it OK to call this subnet 0? So then this would be subnet what? And then this would be? then 3, and 4, and then 5, right? What am I going to do with these numbers? I'm just going to put in parentheses their total host length. So I'm just going to add two to these. So this is going to be 62. And this one's going to be what? 22. And this will be, so we have 16 for the subnet 2. And then these will be four. If we're using Ethernet for a point-to-point -point networks, then we'll always have four total host addresses. All right, so in parentheses, they're just my total addresses, because remember, the two raised to what form is going to be able to accommodate that. So how do I accommodate this? Two raised to how many bits is going to give me uh, 62 total host addresses? Room for 60. Six, which equals what? 
So if you guys look at your handout that I gave you, I believe I did this work for you. Does that make sense? What am I going to do for the next one? 2 raised to what? And this is where things start to vary now. Do you notice it's just a repetitive loop? Before, I just attacked the largest one and said, OK, life is easy. Do this one time. Set it for everybody else. And remember, all of my other networks had the same subnet mask after I did that. But now I'm asking that same question again. How many bits do I need to leave behind to accommodate 22 total host addresses? Five, Five which gives me 32. And how many bits am I going to need to leave behind to accommodate 16? Do you see why it's really nice to make it from largest to smallest? Because now look at my bits. I'm decreasing them. If you have to increase it, you screw it up. You need to make sure that you start with your largest and you work your way down to the smallest. It makes it real simple. So what am I going to do for the next one? 2 raised to what power is going to be able to accommodate four total host addresses? 2 raised to 2. And that produces 4. Do you see how I have zero waste for subnet 2, 3, 4, and 5? Is it safe to assume that 4 and 5 are going to be 2 raised to 2? Is it safe to say that 4 and 5 and 3 will have the same subnet mask? All right, if these bits are my host bits, then what is going to be my network prefix. Let's look at the very first network, right? If this is the address that they gave me. Is it okay if I start here with that address? Is it okay if I use this address as my first network address to address subnet zero? Got to start somewhere, why not at the beginning? So why don't I just put subnet zero right here? What's wrong, though? If I were to put this in here with the slash 24, what would happen? I'm using all 256 addresses for the subnet, correct? Do I need all 256 addresses? How many bits do I need to leave behind for my host? I need to leave six bits behind. So let me put this in here, dash, dash, one, two, three, four, five, six host bits. So what are these bits? In fact, what's in front of these? How many dashes are in front of this? This is the fourth octet, right, folks? I'm only focusing in the fourth octet because originally I was given a slash 24. So how many ones do I have in front of that if I'm looking at the network address? 24 ones. And how many bits did I steal? Because all I needed to leave behind was six. So I needed to assume that. I borrowed those two, correct? So this becomes a slash 26. Where did I come up with the 26? It was the original 24 ones plus the two that I stole from the host portion. Does that make sense? This becomes the network address for subnet 0. What's the very first usable address for this subnet? If this is the network address, remember the network address is the first address per each address block, correct? So what's the first usable address? By definition, a network address is when you have all zeros in the host portion. This is subnet 0, so I put two zeros here to represent 0, correct? The other thing I'm saying is that my network address is dot zero. What does zero look like in binary? All zeros in the last octet. The first usable address is when you have a one and the least most significant bit, the farthest right bit, correct? Convert all eight of these binary numbers back in a decimal, and what would you get? One. So the very first usable address is going to be 192.168.1.1. Clear about that? What is the subnet mask going to be for this? Because remember, this is what's going to be varying now. We can't just lick and stick 
this address, this subnet mask to all of my other subnets. So what is the first, sorry, what is the subnet mask going to be? Well, the subnet mask has all ones. Let me do that in green so we don't get these binary digits all mixed up. And then it's going to have what in the host part? In fact, this is how we know this is the host part because the computer doesn't see a line like that. All zeros in the host part. I need to convert those binary bits back into what? Decimal. Originally, I was given 24 ones, so I have a 255 dot 255 dot 255 dot what? I have a 1 in the 128 and I have a 1 in the 64. 128 plus 64 is 192. And that would be the subnet mask I will use to assign each and every host in this interface of this router. Is that okay? Let's look at subnet 1. What is my network address going to be for subnet 1? So I have a 192.168. Not going to touch that one. I can't touch that one. I bought a slash 24. That means I have to leave that one alone. I don't own it. The only thing I own is the fourth octet because I bought a slash 24 address. We good about that? That's what I own. That's what I can mess around with. What was the range for subnet 0? When will subnet 0 reach its end? When there's all 1s in the host. What's the other word for all 1s? What's the other network terminology that we've learned? That when you have all 1s in the host part, it's going to represent this address. What is this address? The broadcast. So if the network address is the first address, the broadcast is the last address. So when I have 0 here in the 128, a 0 here in the 64, but all 1s afterwards, isn't that the same as saying, what's the number right before 64? So 63 is the last number that belongs to subnet 0. Hence, the next number is, which becomes my network address for subnet 1. Do you notice where 64 is on this scheme of things? Where does the 64, what does 64 look like in binary? It's the first bit after the line I originally drew. Do you see that 1 is now in the network side of the address? And the network address contains However, does subnet 1 need all of these bits? Subnet 1 is right up here. Subnet 1 needs only 22 total host addresses. Make sense? So how many bits must I leave behind to accommodate? I need to leave 5 behind. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that means this line gets moved over to here. What happens to that green zero that's on the wrong side of the fence? It gets infected and it becomes another animal, right? That bit is now used to represent the network. See what just happened? Since I changed this, what will my subnet mask be for subnet 1? Hence the V for VLSM. What is the new cell? I'll do the hard part for you guys. 255.255.255. You guys will do the easy part. 224? Because I have a 1 in the 128, a 1 in the 1, sorry, 1 in the 64, it gives me 192, plus a 1 in the 32, which gives me 224. 
What's the prefix if I decide to use that? 27, because I have 24 ones in the first, second, third octet. And then I have three additional ones here in the fourth octet. You guys see why I like the network prefix? It's so much easier than dealing with the subnet mask, but we have to configure our end devices with subnet masks. I really wish we can just start configuring with the slash 27. In fact, I really wish we can update Windows 7, so there's a prefix, and you can either put the slash 27 or whatever it is, or the subnet mask, and it should be able to calculate one or the other for you. Right? When you're configuring 60, 70,000 hosts or whatever it is, you'd appreciate that shorthand. All right. On with the show. What's the next subnet we're working with? What's the network address for subnet 2? Answer that question. Look at it in binary. What is the last usable address in binary? I'm oh, sorry. What's the last address in binary for this network? It's when you always get all once. It's the broadcast address. In fact, I'll ask you, what is the broadcast address? Well, the broadcast address for this network is going to be, hmm, if I add these two together, 64 and 32 gives me 96, right? So the broadcast address is going to be 95. Wouldn't it just been simple to say, Nick, let's not deal with the last address of the network, of the current network. But just change the bits that you need to change, correct? If I want to know what the next network address is, just change the network bits. Seems to make sense. After all, what is the number before this binary pattern? 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, which translates to be 192.168.1.0. Originally, it would be 95 because that would be the broadcast. But now I want the network address for subnet 2, so it becomes 96. Right? I can't give myself the prefix or the subnet mask until I ask that same question over again. Does subnet 2 need all five bits in the host to accommodate their host? Subnet 2 needs only 16 addresses, correct? How many bits do I need to leave behind to accommodate 16 addresses? One, two, three, four, draw the line. What happens to this traitor? Found himself on the wrong side of the fence, okay? What's the new subnet mask going to be for subnet 2? Like before, I'll do the hard one for you guys. I'm a very gracious and generous teacher. You guys remember that, OK? I had to write down those 3255. That comes a workout from my hand. All you have to do is give me one number. You notice we've been adding the previous subnets with. To get from here to there, this subnet was 64, so I just added the width. To get from here to there, this subnet size was 32. Did I not just add the width? What do you think the next subnet address, without even looking at in binary, is going to be? By the way, this shortcut only works when you're not crossing octets. Okay. So what's subnet 3's network address going to be without even looking at the binary? I encourage you guys to look at the binary. In fact, on the exam, you have to look at the binary. 192.168.1.112, because we took the size of this network, which was 16, and added it to the network address, which gave me 112. It looks like this in binary. All right, I ask myself that same question again. The subnet 3, let's make this one subnet 3. And we'll make this one subnet 4. And we'll make this one in here subnet 
five. We good about that? Does it really matter which one I use for these WANs? They're all just size four. Does subnet three need all 16 addresses? All right, so what? I move the line over one and say, okay, we're good. Now remember, we asked ourselves how many host bits need to be left behind to accommodate the number of hosts for subnet three. Subnet three needs four total hosts, right? So that means I need to leave two bits behind. Now do you notice the line jumped twice. So what happens to these two traders? Could you imagine what that was like when they put that wall up in Berlin? They just arbitrarily laid a wall down there and said, okay, if you're to the left of this wall, you're a Soviet, and you're to the right of it, you're a good, friendly person. You just happen to buy your house on the wrong side of the street. Isn't that what's happening here? This is arbitrarily drawing the line. As I move one, as I move it over, I just say, if you're left of the line, you're all network bits, and if you're the right of the line, you're all host bits. What is the very infamous subnet mask for WAN going to be for your serials? If you stay in the networking program, you guys will be putting this in, in all the time for your point-to-point -point serials. So it's 255. I'm doing the hard part for you. Dot 255. Dot 255. Dot what? 252. I look at this as 2 and a 1. That's a 3. Total address range is 255. 255 minus 3 gives me 252. And that's going to be the same subnet mask for subnet 3, 4, and 5 because they all have the same width of 4 total host addresses. Make sense? The question is, what is the subnet address going to be, the network address for subnet 4 and for subnet 5? So I'll do the hard part. This is 192.168.1. And you guys need to tell me what it's going to be. 168.1. So for number uh, subnet 4 is going to be? Four away. Remember, these addresses represent the beginning of my networks. What's the prefix for subnet two? Twenty-eight. All I needed was four. What's the prefix for subnet three? And it's going to be the same thing for the other ones. Some people love the math. This is the math. That's, that's the formulas in action to create the chart. You're given a logical topology, and you're asking to calculate and map everything out. Network administrators have to journalize or document this stuff. Because when they rearrange these networks, which they will. I mean, look at the biggest problem I have right now. Did I account for future growth for our first subnet? I can handle 62 total addresses for subnet 0, and out of those 62 total, I'm already using 60. That means I can buy two more devices, and I'm filled up. What do I do when I fill up and I use all of them? Can I go to the next one? Can I use 192.168.1.64? Why not? It's a different network. It's a different network address. In fact, I can't use it for two reasons. One, it's a network address that's being used to represent another subnet. So what do I have to do? What's that? Change everything. Gosh, I'd hate to go back to this whole system just to re... I'm giving you my experience. I have had to, have, I have had to do that many times over, whether if I made a mistake or somebody else has made a mistake. But just a little heads up, don't pack them in so tight. Did I use all my addresses for the fourth octet? I ended up at 124, correct? I have another subnet of width 4 that I can use. So my next true block is going to be a 128, which is exactly what? Half 
of the total addresses used in this subnet. Originally, when I used Classful, I was giving all the addresses, all 256, to one network. And then I had to go buy five more Classful addresses. Then I went to class list and I said this couldn't be done. It couldn't be done in class list because I didn't have enough subnet bits to accommodate everybody, correct? Then I went to class list using VLSM and I was like, wow, I optimized this quite a bit that I actually have extra. Maybe I can lease these numbers out to somebody else that needs them and make some money on the side. It's like buying a house, it's only you. You have a bathroom, kitchen, and five bedrooms, and you only sleep in one bedroom at a time. So what do you do with the other four? Rent them out. Make money, have them pay for your mortgage. What else could you do? You can make your bedroom bigger. Knock out the wall, it divides your bedroom and the other bedroom, correct? But what if somebody's already in there? You already gave that space up. Now you got to destroy the hallway and go across the hallway to get to the other bedroom. So use some sense when you're planning these address blocks out. So what I'd like to do is I like to show students visually what this looks like. Because some people love the math, other people learn things using geometry. Okay? Shapes. So let's do that. All right, so graphically I have a block of addresses. I go from 0 to 255, correct? With VLSM, I always start with the widest entry. The widest entry was subnet 0 of 60 host addresses. I asked myself, how many bits must I leave behind to accommodate 64? You guys told me, leave 6 bits behind, which allowed me 2 bits for my subnet. 2 bits, 2 raised to 2 gives me 4 subnets. I divide this block up equally. into four blocks, correct? This goes up to 64, 128, 192. We good with that? I went from 0 to 64 for my very first subnet, and that subnet's going to use that whole range from 0 to 63, correct? Because 64 marks the next subnet. We're clear about that. I asked myself, does subnet 1 need all 64 addresses? And the answer to that is, subnet 1 only needed 32. So what did I do? I divided it up into two subnets. This becomes subnet 1, and this is 1.0. And this is 1.1. Remember the binary? We had that one where we're supposed to belong to, but didn't I move the line over one? And when I moved that line over one, I was going to have a zero and I was going to have a one, correct? So I placed subnet one right here. What do you think I'm going to do next? Subnet 0 is already taken care of, right? Is subnet 1 taken care of? Yes. Go to subnet 2 and ask the same question. Does subnet 2 need all... How many addresses are now in these blocks? If I split this box in half, which I think I did actually, if I did split it in half, how many addresses are in here? 32. What's half of 64? Right? So how many addresses are in this block now? 32. Does subnet 2 need all 32 addresses? No. How many addresses does subnet 2 need? So, guess what I get to do with this box? Right? I'm changing the width. So what is the width going to be for this subnet? So this is going to be my new subnet, subnet number two. 
and it's going to be 16 host, correct? Now I ask myself with subnet 3, does subnet 3 need Does subnet 3 need all 16, uh, sorry, all 16 addresses? How many addresses make up subnet 3? Four? What should I do with that block? If I need four addresses, sorry, if I need only four addresses, and that now I'm at 16, should I divide it into two? Give me two eight subnets? Divided by four, correct? Because 16 divided by four gives me four addresses. So this is where things get nasty. Let's just say each of those lines represent a subnet. We good about that? And that's about as low as I can divide a network because a network needs two devices and another network address and a broadcast address. So this becomes subnet 3, 4, and 5. And then I have an additional subnet I could use later for another WAN if I wanted to. Correct? So this could be 6 if I had to. Do you see these two blocks were never used? Maybe another way of doing this is saying, let's move this range down here and leave this subnet room to grow. Do you guys see it visually now? Which way do you guys like? The math or the geometry? This is beautiful when you're only dealing with one octet. That is universal and it's very flexible for when you're going across multiple octets. Okay? Which one do I expect you guys to know? The hard one. Why did I show you this one? Just so that you guys can relate to what's going on. All right? What are you going to do now? You guys are going to open up Packet Tracer. You're going to take that network the hand that I basically passed out to you guys, and you are going to create that. So listen up, you're going to have to modify it slightly. For every one of my LANs, you are going to add a switch, and you're only going to add two end devices. You should be grateful because I'm not having you add 60 hosts for the one LAN, 20 for the other, and 14. All I want per each local area network is two host addresses. Is that okay? After you add two host addresses for each of those, so you're going to hook them up to a switch. The other thing I need to make you guys know is that the DCEs, you want to write this down in your handout, the DCEs are going to be plugged, are going to be used, sorry, serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 of your router will become the DCE of the network. That means if I look at the WAN between subnet 0 and subnet 1, I'm going to connect my serial cable to subnet 0's routers, serial 0 slash 0 slash 0. But I'm going to plug the other end of the serial cable to 0 slash 0 slash 1 of subnet 1's router. Is that all right? In order for you guys to have a serial cable on your router, you must turn off the router and add the W2T card to the router, OK? So after you drop your router in there, turn it off, upgrade it to a new serial connection, and go from there. Configure them accordingly. Remember, the uh, WAN between subnet 1 and subnet 2 is going to be subnet 3. Look over at the diagram I've written down. The WAN between subnet 2 and subnet 0 is going to be subnet 4. And the WAN between subnet 0 and subnet 1 is going to be subnet 5. Use the appropriate addresses and the appropriate subnet masks. They're written on the board over there. At the end of class, we'll get together. You shouldn't have end-to-end -end delivery. All I'm looking for is if you guys have communications. Sorry, configurations. That's it. We're not going to add uh, static routes. We'll do that next time.